But forgiveness and reconciliation are two different things. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean you want to be best buds with them again. You know, you can forgive somebody that you never see again. Some of you need to forgive some people that are dead. Because you break free from them. But I want you to understand, those of you who when you hear the word reconciliation bristle a little bit at that word and say, I don't want that. I want you to understand reconciliation is beautiful, but I want you to hear this. Reconciliation is not always possible. The person may be dead. The person may not want to reconcile with you. Do You know, you can forgive with them still believing they're right. You can move on even if they don't want to have a relationship with you. Reconciliation is not always possible, but you can still be free. Hear me on this too. Reconciliation is not always proper. If reconciling with that person would mean further abuse in your life, you don't go back. Can I get an amen? Amen. I'll tell you something that bugs me. Can Can I tell you something that bugs me? Can I? You're like, we showed up here, preacher. Just tell us. It bugs me when in the name of the Scripture, preachers sometimes have told women specifically to stay in an abusive relationship where they're being beat up. I've heard story after story after story of women who came and they said, years ago, preacher said I had to go back and he just kept on hitting me. Can I say this unequivocally? If he hits you, get out. The first time. Move out. If you need help with that, we'll help you. But move out. Give him some time to cool down and learn how to be a man. Because if he's hitting you, you didn't marry a man. Oh boy, I'm going to get mad up here. Say something I regret. You get out. You don't let anybody bring you a Bible verse that say, says you need to stay there and get beat up because it's not in there. I know what the Bible said, but it doesn't say you stay there and get beat. You get out. You call law enforcement. I don't want to get him in trouble. He needs to be in trouble. You don't go back until there's been a real change. I don't mean an apology, I mean a change. Until there's been some counseling. Until there's been some repentance. Can I get an amen? I'm I'm mad up here this morning, I want you to get with me. But I am mad at people who get abused. not mad at them, I'm mad at the abuser, I'm mad at the situation. My heart just breaks And people all over Henderson County, women and children, who have to live in a tragic, horrible, abusive situation. I'm so mad I can't even preach on reconciliation anymore. (laughs) What I do want to say to you is you're being abused. Get out. Get help. There is hope. And I believe I'm throwing a lifeline out to somebody this morning to say there is hope. Get out of that situation. Let me just say this. Abuse almost always gets worse. Second time is worse, and the third time is worse. And then bad things happen. I've been there. I've seen it happen. Don't let that happen to you. Amen? Amen. So understand, when reconciliation is possible, it is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Now, here's the good news. Take a deep breath. Let's move on to something happy now. Jacob and Esau were reconciled. And that is a wonderful thing. Sometimes when you get divided with people, everybody's standoffish in their pride and they can't unite. Jacob and Esau got together. Jacob took off. He, he stepped out. And we're going to just look at what steps Jacob took in his life. I don't know if he knew about all this 
looking forward. I don't know that Jacob sat down and strategized all this, but it worked. What happened really quickly that allowed them to reconcile together? Number one, Jacob allowed time to pass. 20 years had gone by between the offense and between the reconciliation. Understand this, reconciliation is not a quick fix. But many, many times people need time to heal. People say, I, you ever heard it said, time heals all wounds? Boy, that's a lie. Time does not heal all wounds. But all wounds do need time to heal. Sometimes when you're fighting, husbands and wives fight, right? It's not a discussion, you're fighting. Sometimes when you're fighting, you just need to call a timeout. I tell married couples this all the time when they ask me. Is that when your argument reaches a certain level where it's not being productive anymore, it's time to stop fighting and go cool off? That's me. Once I get emotional, I'm no good anymore. Once my emotions are in it, I'm not about production anymore, not about getting seen things solved. I just want to win. Anybody know how to win over your spouse? Let me ask an honest question this morning. How many know what button to push in your spouse to get them mad? Uh, there. Uh, you're mad. I win. You're mad. I can do that. Jacob understood and, and by necessity he stayed away from Esau for 20 years but during that 20 years God was doing a whole lot of work in Jacob and God was doing a whole lot of work in Esau to make reconciliation possible so allow the appropriate time to pass don't try to rush reconciliation if you want to be reconciled to a person and they're not ready give them the time and the space they need secondly Genesis 32 3 it says this Jacob's headed out. It said he sent messengers ahead to his brother Esau who was living in the region of Seir in the land of Edom. Jacob started a conversation. He initiated the conversation. Well, I think they ought to go first. You as a Christian, you as a child of God, you as a follower of Jesus Christ, are to be agents of restoration, reconciliation, and healing. Meaning oftentimes it's on us to take the first step. Anybody ever gotten angry and prideful and just said, I'll wait on them to talk? You people are looking so holy this morning and so righteous and so wonderful. Let me just ask you, any of you married couples ever put up pillows between you in bed to say, yeah, I'll show you? Has anybody here ever done that? Two? Anybody? Three? Four? Five? Anybody else? Thursday night, the only person that raised their hand was my wife. If I put a pillow up there, it means stay away. I'm mad about something. You talk first. Jacob started the conversation. Jacob reached out. You know, sometimes all it takes is a text message to open a door. All it takes. Maybe it's somebody you haven't spoken to for years. Maybe you could send them a text and just say, how you doing? And when you do it, reach out to them in a way that they have an out if they don't want to reconcile. Don't do like a lady I saw on Facebook not long ago. She's like, I'm reaching out to my brother so-and-so. We haven't spoken in 20 years. This is on Facebook. <laughs> and now he has an opportunity to repent and come back. He didn't. Because I kept watching for a couple days to see what would happen. <laughs> How about a text message that says, just wanted to reach out and say hello. Not let's have dinner, because that may be too much for them. Jacob just started a conversation, 
with his brother Esau. He sent a message to him. Then he did the thing that's most difficult for me. Jacob humbled himself. He told them in, the, in verse 4, in the message, he said, Give this message to my master Esau. Humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Humble greetings. And he asked him at the end in verse 5, he said, I'm hoping that you will be friendly to me. He approached him with humility. He wasn't reminding him of what happened. He wasn't trying to explain why he did what he did. 